Good afternoon, this is Mr. McGee and I wanted to make a tutorial for you on how to make a table. Many of you have already successfully done this, so this is just directed to those of you that really need assistance with this, or if you want to learn some additional skills as well. Now to introduce you to this table, I didn't set it up properly because I wanted to show you what I'm going to do, but I did just put the numbers and the raw data in place. If you take a look, you'll notice I'm using as my independent variable the volume of music and I'm using the decibel as a unit. Now again, the uncertainty plus or minus three decibels is either based on the measuring device itself, maybe in the instructions or the package, or the uncertainty is based on my guess as a scientist based on fluctuations I've seen in the tool itself. This is entirely up to you. Notice I have variations of my independent variable. Now I will point out to everybody here a lot of people will look and say, how come this is, not, this is not at zero decibels like it should be? This is another example where not everything in science is always zero. It turns out background noise is always present, and 40 decibels is actually the normal background noise of the environment. It actually varies a little bit, but 40 is a pretty good control for the background sound that is out there. Uh, if you want to see a video out there, it's by a gentleman, um, I, forget, I think it's called Veritasium on YouTube. He has a whole video where he actually goes into a almost soundproof environment where they get it almost down to zero decibels, and it's just creepy. It's really cool, though. Anyways, I would like to point out the decibel scale is actually logarithmic, so although it looks linear, like it's going up every 10 decibels, it's actually going up 10 times... 100, 1,000, and 80 decibels is 10,000 times louder than 40 decibels. So this is logarithmic, although that doesn't affect anything. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, let's just kind of organize this a little better so it's easier to see. Notice that I have an initial mass recorded and I have a final mass recorded. We're going to process and get the change. But let's break this up so it's easier to see. I'm going to put a bracket around each of these. If I highlight it and then I hit control and then I highlight everything else that I want to put brackets around, just like this. But I have to hit hold control, that way it separates them. Okay, then I can go up here and right now it's selected for underline. I don't want that. I want to do a box just like that. There, everything is in a box. I would like to put all of these in their own separate box, so I'm just going to highlight the row and click on it, just like that. I'd like to put all these in their own separate box as well, so I'm going to click on that and highlight that. And I would also like to put all of these in a little box separate from the processing. And looks like my mean and standard deviation. I'm going to go ahead and separate those, but this is entirely user, uh, user preference. Okay, with that being said, let's kind of straighten this out a little bit too. For 40 decibels, we have a couple tricks where we can actually center this. This little tool here where it says merge and center, I'm going to click on it. And you can go up here and move this if you want to move it more to the sides or into the center. But I like it merge and center right there just like that. So let's go ahead and hit merge and center. And we're going to do this for each and every one here just like that. That'll put it nice in the middle. And I can even mess around with this here, this merge and center. And if it goes a little too small, you can hit wrap text. And that's another option. That'll actually fit things in multiple cells just like that. So it works really nice. This is entirely up to you as well. Your task is just to make it look as nice and presentable. This box is a little crunched, so I'm going to highlight these. And I'm going to go ahead and center them. And I want them to kind of be a little higher. So I'm going to use this top tool. By the way, this is Microsoft Office 2013 I'm using as well. Okay, center and raise. That way everything looks nice and presentable. Last thing here. I would like all of these numbers, in fact, every number to be nice and centered. So I'm just going to hit that middle one, even though they're on the same line, and I'm going to center them. There, everything looks nice and presentable. So let's go ahead and do our calculations real quick. We have our initial and our final mass. In order to calculate the change in mass, because ultimately that's what we want, we need to do a little math. Now I could get out my cell phone or my calculator and manage to do this on my own, 
but Excel has its own built-in calculator. To get the change, you just do the final, and you subtract the initial from it. If you look, that is C3, that is cell C3, and this is cell C2. Therefore, you do an equation. Equals C3 minus C2. Whoops. C2. And then you just hit Enter, and an equation has been calculated. Now, I could do this for each other one. I could hit equals D, uh, what is that, D3 minus D2, and I will get an answer as well. Or I could just hit, go over it, and copy that cell, or I could just hit Control C, and then I just paste that cell by Control V, or just right click paste. I can also do this for each other one. And you'll notice it's automatically calculating using that same equation for every row that is initially above it. And you can double check this by just clicking on the cell and make sure it used the proper values as they're displayed. And so far everything looks good. Looks like we're good to go in this instance. Excel's pretty smart in that sense. All right, now to calculate our mean. Easy enough, we just drag it over here. And let's do that for every single column or row. We just go over here to Auto Sum, and we hit Average, which is our mean. And there we go. Now, if everybody recalls, we want to have one more decimal point than what our raw data has. But that brings us to another point. Notice little data pieces like this and this are one decimal point. We want to make those nice and even. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to go and whoops, add a decimal point so they're all even. And this one, I'm going to make sure that they all have the same number of decimal points and that they have one more than the raw data, which has only one decimal point. So they all have two. Well, there you go. Now, to calculate my standard deviation, I really only need it for the change to make my graph. So I'm just going to go ahead here and go to my frequency button and frequency. And, or whoops. That was for something else I did earlier today. Click on the cell you want it calculated. Go to your function box, not frequency, and find standard deviation. If it's not under your commonly used ones, you go under here to all or to statistical. But I use it a lot, so it's under my frequently used ones. OK, and to do standard deviation, you just basically highlight all the data. Make sure you don't include the mean in it, just your raw data. And then you hit OK and your standard deviation is calculated. Now, I could do that again for every single one, but again, I'm just going to hit Control C and copy that cell, and I'm just going to paste it in all the places. Now, like I said, in this instance, you don't need it for every single cell, but it wouldn't hurt to do it, so I'm just going to highlight and paste it for every single cell. Done. Or am I? The standard deviation, we are going to need to change our decimal points here in this instance. How many decimal points are we going to round this to? And again, the same thing. Round it to the same number of decimal points by going up to here. There we go. Our standard deviation, for the most part, is all set, and our mean is all set. Oops. And you'll notice that made my box disappear up there, so I'm just going to go up here and click on that cell again. That'll restore that. OK, it looks like we're done, but we're still not quite done. We have our independent variable labeled, but I have no labels for what this data here means. So here's a trick. We're going to click somewhere on this top row, and we're going to right click and go to Insert Entire Row. And that'll add a row above everything else, because what I want to do is I want to create a title that will govern everything below this here. Okay? So Actually, what I'm going to do is just kind of include it in this entire section. But for right now, let's just give it a name here. Uh, let's say, whoops. Let's say Massive Z Maze. I think it's M-A-Y-S or M-A-I-Z-E. Those are different ways of writing it. And just for future reference, the species name is lowercase on the second part. And then we usually just kind of put that in italics. That's just the scientific way of doing it. Okay, we need our units and uncertainty, so I'm going to put a parenthesis here. Remember, you could go to insert symbol to put your plus and minus, or you could just be lazy and do plus slash minus, but that's kind of lame. 
Or a third way, if you get the hang of it, hit Alt-0177, and that'll automatically put it in there. Plus or minus 0.1 grams. <coughs> and it, again, depends on what tool you use to measure that. All right, if I click off, I now have a title up here, but now we have a problem. It's not centered. To do that, I'm just going to highlight everything I want this centered over top of, and I'm going to go here to my home, and remember that merge and center button we used a while ago? Click on it. And there, it'll center it over everything I want. And now I'm going to highlight this again because I want to put a box here, and I want to put a box over top of all of this as well. And there you go. My table, for the most part, looks really nice. It should be relatively complete. I'm going to show you how to copy it right now and put this into a word processor. You just basically highlight it, and you can hit Control-C, or you could just right-click it. And let me open my word processor here real quick. And if you didn't know, you can hit Control and Wheel on your mouse to kind of zoom in or out. So that's another feature. Now, we, when you hit right-click to paste it, you get a bunch of options. Notice that if I keep the source formatting or destination style, things change. I want it to match as best as possible, but let's just keep the source formatting. Watch what happens. If I try to shrink my table, it distorts it. It's kind of a pain and it's a hassle, and I can't get this to post on my sheet the way I want it to. So I'm going to just control Z and get rid of that. I could try some other options here, like uh, link the formatting, and let's see what that does. Once again, it's kind of a hassle, and it really just depends on what you want to do. And maybe your lab, it's not a big deal. But for most labs, what I like to do, this option, where you see it has a mountain, paste it as a picture. And the reason I like this is for this reason here. Because if, as it's pasted like a picture, I can resize my table as an image, and it doesn't affect anything. It's all the exact same format. And then all I have to do is click on it up here to format, and I can go to wrap text. And in front of text, now I can pretty much move this wherever I want it to go. So um, I can put a title and do all that stuff. You are going to want a title here. Maybe we'll just put, uh, we'll put table here, and we'll put uh, the effect of volume, no, let's see, music, volume on the mass of a mass of Z maze. Just something simple like that. And again, just to be scientific, we like to put that in italics. Okay? And you obviously can mess around with making this fit better and move that over more if you like. I'll just have to move it and mess with that. And you can go up here to I've never liked Word that much, but you can go up here to Paragraph and change all this to make it fit better. But it's really up to you guys how you want to do that. That's just kind of an option. Just make sure when you paste it, you have a title, a descriptive title, as far as what your table is. And you have your table easily legible with units for your independent variable and uncertainties, and units for your dependent variable with units and uncertainties. Those are what you want. Watch my next tutorial on how to make a graph, and we'll come back to this very table, and I will show you how to do it properly. Thank you.